Hello and welcome. I am Harish and in this channel I talk about various ways in which you can build pretty much anything from a web app to a mobile app without writing a single line of code. And this is a quick demo on how you can integrate Thunkable and Airtable. Basically, I am going to show you how to build a form and then send data from your app to Airtable base and store the data there without absolutely writing any line of code. Let's quickly look at the demo first and see how this works and then get into building it. What you're seeing on the screen is my actual phone right here. I'm testing it out. There are three fields as you can see. One is the name, then there is notes, and then there is upload. On clicking upload, what it does is opens the camera and takes a picture. So it is asking my permission. It's going to give it permission. It opens the app, and now I can click a picture of myself and then it asks me to upload the picture so I'm just going to say yes and now it should upload the image to Cloudinary which lets you store media and gives you a URL and once that is there the submit buttons get, get gets enabled and you can submit this data to Airtable see the URL appears and my preview also the picture preview and then I can click on submit and this should submit the data to Airtable and here is my Airtable base. Let me quickly remove this. Yes, as you can see, this is the data and you can click on the image and my image appears right here. So that's how easy it is to upload or data, send data from Thunderbolt to Airtable. Now let's quickly get started and build this without writing any code in under 10 minutes. Let's go. Alright, by now you know that uh, you need a Airtable base. Create an Airtable account if you don't have one or you can sign up using the link in the description below. And once you create an account, the first step is to create a base. I have created a base called Thunkable Data and these are the default fields, name, notes and attachments. And then go to account and then copy the key from here, right? This is the first step that you need. Along with this, the second thing that you need is Cloudinary account. Cloudinary is where we'll upload the media files and then get the URL from there. So make sure you have a Cloudinary account and have these three ready, right? Now let's go to Thunkable and create a project, right? So I'm going to create a project, Thunkable to Airtable demo and the category will be Scholar Education and all free accounts on Thunkable are bound to have public projects which means whatever you create on a free account is publicly available for anybody else to see right so make sure you don't have any sensitive data on those apps that you build once i click create as the first step go to the settings icon on the top left corner of the screen and add your cloudinary information right so here on the top left corner just click on the gear icon and scroll down and add these three values let me just quickly add them and get back Once you are done adding those, the second step is to link your Airtable account to this app, right? Since you've seen the demo, by now you know that uh, my account is already linked. So if you click on data sources, click on plus icon, it will ask you to create new and then click on Airtable and then paste your API key there and select the base, right? So if I click this, it will ask me to paste the API key. I'm just going to go back, copy this key. I'm going to regenerate this so that you don't use it as your own key so once you paste it and click sorry create new a double once you paste it and click refresh it should show the basis and uh, select the base and once you select the base we are done with creating the linking between a table and thunkable now all our job is to create the ui let's create the ui if you remember the demo there are basically two fields and one upload button and a label above it to show the link and then an image preview and then we have the loading icon, the submit button and the thank you message, right? So now I'm going to quickly create this in fast forward where you can see how I drag and drop the elements and then we'll jump into building the blocks where I will.
all right so the app ui is ready where we have two fields then we have the upload button clicking on which open the camera app on the device whichever the user is using it works on web preview as well and then submit button and that's it now let's quickly go and add our logic to this app right to do that let's jump into blocks now before we jump into blocks let me explain the logic right when somebody clicks on upload we need to upload the image to cloud and store the url and then once the url is ready we're going to enable the submit button and then be able to submit the data to airtable so let's go to blocks and the first step is when somebody clicks on upload or the first step actually is when screen one opens i'm going to disable the submit button so that people don't submit without uh, adding the actual data right let me just quickly add all the blocks and i'll explain to you each step at the end of this video so this is going to be in super fast motion but make sure you pause and look at all this uh, blocks that, that i'm going to add Let's take a quick pause here and see what I've done. I've initialized the variable called image link to empty. So we can store the cloudinary link once it is uploaded. And when the upload button is clicked, oh sorry, when the upload image button is clicked, we are going to send the URL to cloudinary with just these two blocks. It says URL from upload file and photo from camera, which opens the camera on the device. And then once this is done, I'm setting both the text, the link preview text, and the image preview to the actual image URL that we received from Cloudinary. And when the screen opens, I'm disabling this. Great. So let me quickly explain to you the logic uh, behind this. When somebody clicks on the submit button, what we're doing is enabling the loading icon first. We show the loading icon and then we're checking if the link is actually empty or not. If it is empty, this is a quick homework for you. If you are uh, dedicated to building something like this, add the logic for if the link is empty, what are you going to show? Some tips are add an alert box so that you show the user that the image hasn't been uploaded or if they uh, if there is an error in the API, show the error and ask the user to upload the image again. But if there are no errors and the image link is available, this is essentially like a mandatory field. If you want all the form fields to be mandatory, you just add multiple logics here in the if block basically. And then if there are no errors and all the data has been filled, just go to data sources on the left and use the create row in Thunderbolt data block, which creates a new row inside the base with the data that we are sending. Now the column names are available here. You just have to get the text blocks for each of the columns from the input fields that we created and the variable that we created to store the link from Cloudinary and add it here. And if it is successful, I'm showing the thank you message and then also hiding the loading icon. That's it. This logic will pretty much give you what we have seen in the demo. If you've learned something new from this video, consider dropping a like below and also subscribing to this channel because this channel is all about building stuff without coding. See you in the next one. Peace.